Hello and welcome to Life Science and today's episode is about mTOR. So our story begins at a small island which is about 4,000 kilometers westward from the coast of Southern America. We're talking about Easter Island and this island has been a province of Chile. No, not this Chile, but this Chile, which is the country as you might know. And Easter Island has got a cool flag of its own. Yeah. It really looks cool. Well, the island, as you might know, is famous for these statues, which are called Moais. But the island was about to become famous for something else. And it all begins in 1964, when a ship, HMCS Cape Scott, which has 40 scientists in it, and it also has this guy, Georges Nograti, who is a microbiologist, and he is about to make a really interesting discovery. So the ship set sail from uh, Canada, Nova Scotia, and it goes on for a journey which spans about thousands of kilometers, tens of thousands of kilometers, and brings them to an island where the number of horses are more than the number of people. Well, that was not the only weird thing about this island. As Nagwadi observed that people in these islands walked barefoot. But even after that, they did not have any case of tetanus. Now, you might ask me, what's wrong with walking barefoot? And what is its connection with tetanus? Well, the idea about this is that moist tropical soil is like a very good habitat for this bacteria, which is Clostridium tetany, and this bacteria causes tetanus. So it's not always the good old nail which has to cause this disease it might be caused by walking barefoot. So walking barefoot is not a very good idea. Anyway, so this guy, George Nogari, was really, really interested in this, and he was asking the question, what is special about these people or this place that there are so less number of tetanus cases? And so the first thing that came to his mind was that maybe there's something in the soil which does not let the bacteria go. So what he did, he dug up some soil and took 67 samples from different parts of the island and took that to his lab back in Canada. And what he did was he tried to culture or grow those uh, soil samples and he found out that only one of those samples contained tetanus and other 66 samples did not contain any bacteria. And that was very, very different from anywhere else in the world. So he thought, okay, maybe there is some potential drug or some kind of molecule inside the soil which is not letting the bacteria grow. And so he sent it to a pharmaceutical company, Aerst, and Aerst did a lot of testing on this, all right. And so these guys took the soil, grew them, and found out that a bacteria named Streptomyces hygroscopicus grew in this soil and this bacteria produced a wonder drug, rapamycin. Well, rapamycin might sound like a molecule which likes listening to rap songs, but that's not the case. To find out what's special with this bacteria, let's meet with this guy, Sorain Seigel, who was a microbiologist at Aerst, the same company which was using the drug for testing. So this guy found out, and other scientists working in the company, that rapamycin is an immunosuppressant, antifungal, antibacterial, as well as had potential of being an anti-cancer drug. Doesn't that sound so cool, like a single drug which is doing so many things, almost like a magic bullet? So this guy, Surain Segal, he took the drug and sent it to National Cancer Institute for testing. And these guys, along with the guys in AIRST, found out that this drug is cytostatic. Now, what is cytostatic? Cytostatic means that the drug stops cell division, which means it does not let the cell grow. And in cancer, as we all know, cells grow at a tremendous rate. Most of the cancer drugs that were in use at that time were cytotoxic. They outright killed, decimated the cells, but this was special. It did not kill the cells, but rather 
stopped cell division. But before more research could take place, disaster struck. In 1982, the company Ailst shut down and was sold off to another company. And along with it went away the research that was going on about this drug. But our hero, Surain Segal, did not stop here. He actually took this drug, rapamycin, took the samples of those drugs and stuffed that into his own refrigerator. Yeah, like for five years, the drugs were there in his refrigerator in boxes which said, do not eat. Well, then uh, as the company was bought by another company named Wyatt, this guy, Surin Sagal, requested his superiors that, okay, maybe if we are not doing some research on this drug, why can't we send it to like other people who want to work on this? And so, Surin Sagal sent it to Saul Snyder. This guy was a neuropharmacologist at John Hopkins, and his uh, PhD student, David Sabatini, were really interested in this drug. And so, Surin Sagal sent them the samples happily. He just wanted someone to work on these. But the question remained, even after the apomycin could do so much stuff, no one knew how did it work. What was special about this drug? And some research which recently came out during that time also showed that rapamycin could also prolong lifespan, you know. So it was marketed as, you know, the forever pill in many, you know, business magazines, right? So uh, people saw a lot of potential in the drug, but they did not know how all this stuff worked. Well, I guess you guys are interested about the working of the drug and how it all happens as much as those scientists were back then. So to know more about the workings of the drug, join us in the next episode. Till then, bye-bye. Thank you.